So, there you are, trapped high up in a burning building, cornered at a cliffside by generic baddies, or riding an explosive laden train across a rickety bridge, with only a precipitous drop as a means of escape. Mondays, am I right? While it's pretty obvious that falling from a great height is a fairly reliable way to kick the proverbial bucket, in certain extreme situations it might be preferable to take your chances with full damage rather than face an even greater and more immediate danger. So, thinking about it, what sort of heights could a person fall from and have a reasonable chance of survival? You think of what I'm thinking, partner? Aim for the bushes. I'm Stu, this is Debunked, and we're here to talk the truths from the myths and the facts from the misconceptions. This video is made with the support of Brilliant, a fun educational platform that focuses on science and math courses in the form of games and puzzles. We've got you a 30-day free trial and 20% off their premium subscription. According to the World Health Organization, falls are the second most common cause of unintentional injury deaths worldwide, behind only road traffic injury deaths. Known more academically as vertical deceleration injuries, the negative effect of falls are significant. Across the globe, there are an estimated 684,000 fatal falls every year. Indeed, the US Workplace Safety Agency OSHA, identifies falls from height as one of the four main occupations occupational hazards, known ominously as the fatal four. Clearly, falling from very high up can be very bad for your health. To get started, let's look at the physics of one of these vertical deceleration injuries to help us get an idea of what makes falling such a massive hazard. At the most basic level, things, in this case people, fall to the ground because of the influence of Earth's gravitational pull. The height of a person's fall determines the speed at which they will be moving when they eventually stop. The higher up you are when you fall, the faster you'll be moving when you hit the ground, and the harder you'll hit it. Simple. However, this speed doesn't just increase indefinitely the higher and higher you get. Since planet Earth has a gaseous atmosphere, an object falling through it experiences drag in the form of air resistance, i.e. the collective effect of billions and billions of air molecules slamming into you as you fall. This acts as an opposing force to gravity, and as gravity pulls you down faster and faster, the amount of air resistance also increases until these forces eventually reach a point of balance. When this happens, you will have hit your terminal velocity, and will no longer fall any faster under your own weight. While this specific speed will vary slightly based on your size, weight, yes weight, body position, clothing, etc., the average person reaches terminal velocity after falling for about 12 seconds, at which point they'll be moving at about 200 km per hour, or roughly 120 miles per hour, and will have fallen approximately 450 meters or 1,500 feet. This means that it doesn't matter if you've fallen from 450 meters or 1,500 meters. When you hit the ground, you'll do so at the same speed. If you stop suddenly by hitting the ground while you're traveling 200 km per hour, it's fair to say your chances of survival are practically zero. At the exact moment of impact, the surface of your body that makes contact with the ground immediately stops moving. For a split second after that, however, all of the body mass above it, well, that keeps going. This means that the force of your own body weight slams down onto itself at 200 km per hour, bursting cells, ripping apart blood vessels, vessels, crushing bones and organs, and just generally ripping body tissues apart and turning you into human mush. In short, you're dead. Of course, most people who die in falling accidents do not do so after plunging from the roof of a skyscraper, and certainly are not travelling at 200 km an hour when they hit the ground. Indeed, the Health and Safety Executive, the National Health and Safety Regulator of the UK, points out that most fall-from-height accidents involve falls from things like roofs, large vehicles, scaffolding, overhead walkways, and especially ladders. Think about that next time you're changing a light bulb. With this in mind, is there a height from which it is generally agreed a fall would be fatal or survivable? Well, although there's been a fairly considerable amount of investigation into this very issue, it may surprise you to learn that individual studies and expert opinions vary considerably in what they conclude to be a non-survivable fall height. 
Investigations into how height affects survivability of falls often employ the concept of a median lethal dose, or LD50, an abbreviation of lethal dose 50%. This metric is most widely used in toxicology for assessing the relative strength of poisons by measuring the amount of a substance needed to kill half of a tested population. When used to evaluate the survivability of falls from height, however, LD50 refers to the median height at which which 50% of fall victims do not survive. So, what is that crucial height? Multiple sources, including medical textbooks and scientific journals, state that someone who falls from 15 meters, or about 48 feet up, has a roughly 50-50 chance of survival. However, this oft-cited statistic was established around the 1980s, and a more recent study from 2017 suggested that medical advancements since then have pushed the LD50 up closer to 20 meters, or around 68 feet. Good to know. On the other hand, some studies are more pessimistic, reporting 50% and 100% mortality rates at heights of only up to 12 and 18 meters respectively. Indeed, a 2019 study conducted in India found that over 90% of all fatal falls happen at heights of up to 12 meters, or around 40 feet. Not only that, the study also found that almost half of all fatal falls happen at heights of under 6 meters or only about 20 feet. Similarly, information from the US Bureau of Labor Statistics show that in 2015, nearly 17% of all fatal falls were from heights of 10 feet or less. That's only 3 meters. Of course, it's likely there will be variable conditions that influence the outcome of the fall, such as environmental factors, the physical surroundings, like the average height of the building you're likely to fall from, and the general health of the victim will also play a significant role. On top of that, there are the safety standards of the country where the fall takes place, as well as the quality of the area's healthcare to take into account. So it's perfectly possible, perhaps even likely, that the average height of a fatal fall might very well vary from place to place. But evidently, height is not the only factor here. As it turns out, falls and fall-related injuries are governed by a very complicated array of physical and biological interactions, of which the specific height of the fall is but one part of the equation. While the survivability of a fall obviously does progressively dwindle the higher the fall is from, it is not the only thing we have to consider. Aside from height, one of the most significant significant variables that determines whether you'll pull through or perish following a fall is the position and orientation of your body upon impact. It should be obvious that you're more likely to survive a 10 meter fall onto your feet than you are to survive a 5 meter fall directly onto your head. While crumpled, broken legs are no doubt unpleasant, injuries to one's extremities are usually far less life-threatening than injuries to the torso, head and neck. Not surprisingly, a recent study from 2022 found that injuries to the feet, ankles, and pelvis are more common in those who survived falls, while head and chest injuries are more common in those that didn't. Basically, it's better your ankles take the hit than your fragile yet vital brain. In 2011, the Scandinavian Journal of Trauma, Resuscitation and Emergency Medicine reported on the extraordinary case of a woman who experienced a truly nightmarish fall while climbing in Colorado's Rocky Mountains. At one point during the ascent, a safety rope slipped through her harness, causing her to plunge down 60 meters, that's 200 feet, where she smashed into a solid rock surface before falling another 30 meters or 100 feet and again hitting solid rock where she finally stopped for a total vertical fall distance of 90 meters or roughly 300 feet. Her boyfriend who was on the climb with her and witnessed the entire fall immediately rushed down to find the woman terribly injured but awake. Emergency services were immediately called, beginning a lengthy recovery period involving numerous surgeries. After several months, the woman was essentially back to normal, concluding an exceptional case of someone surviving a fall that would generally be considered entirely unsurvivable. Much of the academic discussion of the incident 
focused on the position and orientation of her body upon impact, crediting her survival to landing feet first. This spread the force of the impact over a longer period of time, across a larger area, and concentrated much of the force on less essential body parts. Another extremely important thing to consider regarding the survivability of falls is the impact surface itself. Newton's second law, which states that the force experienced by an object is equal to its mass multiplied by its acceleration, helps explain the significance of the impact surface. The force your body experiences upon impact depends on your body's mass and the acceleration or deceleration it undergoes. Whether you land on soft grass or hard concrete, the change in velocity will be the same, i.e. the velocity of your fall before contact and the deceleration down to zero as your body comes to a complete stop. It's this rate of deceleration to zero that is crucial to your chances of survival. A deformable surface lengthens the period of time over which deceleration occurs, reducing the force of the impact. If you think of it like a crumple zone in a car, then it becomes clearer. The energy from your fall has to be transferred somewhere, and that means that it's either absorbed by the impact surface, causing it to crumple, or you absorb it, causing you to crumple. Extending the deceleration even by only a few milliseconds can reduce the damage of a fall significantly. Landing on surfaces like wet, mushy ground or a thick covering of snow is likely to be significantly less lethal than slamming into hard concrete. Sometimes just having something to break your fall makes a crucial difference. And despite it being a movie trope, it seems that every few months there's news coverage about someone falling out of or off of a high-rise building and surviving the unsurvivable fall by landing on a car. Most recorded stories involve survivors landing on parked vehicles, but in November 2014, in the financial district of San Francisco, 58-year-old Pedro Perez lost his balance while on his window window washing apparatus 11 stories above the sidewalk and plummeted nearly 40 meters or 130 feet onto the roof of a moving car. Miraculously, Perez landed on the rear half of the car, just behind the driver's seat. The driver escaped completely unharmed, while Pedro was immediately rushed to hospital. Though the injuries that Perez sustained were substantial and he could have easily been killed, experts speculate that had the incident occurred a few seconds later, he would have missed the car in entirely and not survived the impact with the tarmac. It took about three seconds for Perez, falling at an estimated speed of 60 miles per hour, 100 kilometers per hour, to hit the car, which acted as a big shock absorber and saved his life. From these stories, we can see that under exceptional circumstances, when the conditions are just right, humans can potentially survive falls from heights that are usually almost invariably fatal. It's insanely unlikely, but insanely unlikely doesn't mean never happens. Statistically, investigations into the death rate of falls have determined that falls from 15 meters or 48 feet, or roughly four or five floors up in a building, have a 50% survival rate. That is to say, people who fall from that high up survive and do not survive at equal rates. Mortality rates increase to 90% at the 22 to 26 meter or 75 to 85 feet height range, around the seventh floor. Falls from floors above the seventh quickly approach a 100% chance of death. As mentioned, recent medical advancements may mean survival rates could be better than previously indicated. But the truth is, it isn't really possible to pinpoint a specific height at which a fall just immediately stops being survivable, because the survivability of a fall depends on far more than just height alone. Your chances of surviving a fall from a height are multifactorial. Height is a major determinant, but so are body position, landing surface, the age and general health of the individual falling, even something like the clothes you are wearing can affect your chances of survival. Of course, exceptions exist amongst even the most serious of circumstances. If there are enough people falling off of things, and there are, some of them are going to defy the odds. And so, if you are still trapped up high in a burning building, cornered at a cliffside by generic baddies, or riding an explosives laden train across a rickety bridge with only a precipitous drop as a means of escape, here's the advice we have for you. Number 1. Aim If there is something on the ground that would provide a softer landing than concrete, aim for it. Number 2. 
Try to break your fall. It's a grim prospect, but any contact you can make with anything on your way down will slow your fall when you eventually stop. Number 3. Attempt to land on your feet. Your lower extremities are your best defense against damage to your more vital organs. Number 4. Roll to the side. Lengthening the duration of the collision, even by a fraction of a second, can be crucial. Number 5. Be very, very lucky. Bon voyage! If you've enjoyed learning about the scientific concepts we've covered as part of this video, then you can continue your educational enlightenment for free with The Brilliant Platform. Here you can develop your problem-solving skills with The Scientific Thinking Course. You'll learn how basic scientific principles can be applied to the world around you by using them to solve puzzles. But don't worry, you don't have to be an academic achiever to do this. You can tailor your learning journey to your own skill level by taking a quick quiz when you sign up and you'll be matched with content that fits your current skill level and interests. But before you know it, you'll be mastering concepts that you thought were unachievable before. So instead of doom scrolling through social media when you have five minutes spare, why not make use of that time and exercise your brain? To try everything Brilliant has to offer, free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash debunked or click on my link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.